Kiora, welcome to Smash News on TV4. I'm Grace. And I'm Emily. In today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in the form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We help them find it and the latest in weather around the country. But first, a story that will turn your world upside down. If you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, it turns out you're right. Builders in Germany have built an upside-down house. And before you think they may have read the plans upside down, they did it on purpose. The wacky house was built as a tourist attraction, as well as being a comet of the state of the world. The house is 23 feet tall and rests on its roof and has steel beams in the attic. Inside the house there are beds screwed into the ceilings, upside-down wardrobes, upside down kitchen and even an upturned bathroom though it's not known if anyone has tried to have a bath in it or go to the toilet many tourists visiting the house complain of feeling sick and dizzy after just a few minutes inside we now cross over to our reporter sophie who is inside the house how are you feeling sophie Thanks Grace. I'm here with the owner of the house, Isabel, and I'm feeling great. So Isabel, what made you decide to build an upside down house? Well, I wanted to make my house unique. What comment do you feel the house makes about the state of the world? I think it shows a new way to live in a house and it shows development, development from caves to upside down houses. What are some of the challenges of living in a house that is upside down? Well, it's quite tricky because everything's upside down. And finally, do you think upside down houses will set a trend? No, because it's very hard to do things. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Sophie for Smash News. Back to you, Grace, in the studio. <laughs> Thanks, Sophie. Even watching that makes me feel spooked. And now for a story that is truly out of sight. Look out, Harry Potter, the world of science is catching up to the world of magic. Scientists in Europe have created a 3D invisibility cloak, which can hide objects by bending light waves. It has been found that light can be controlled using special tiny crystals that make objects disappear. So far, scientists have made small objects such as coins disappear, but hope that it won't be long before they are hiding cars, planes and even people. People have always dreamed of making themselves invisible. One top scientist says the possibilities are endless and we are very excited. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, the scientists have been having trouble finding it. As soon as we put it down somewhere, it just disappears, the inventor of the cloak said. It appears they're having trouble finding other things too, like their lunch, which they think may be underneath the cloak. But what will this invention actually be used for? Hoping to see through the reasons behind the invisibility cloak. Here is our on-the-spot reporter, Sam, with more on the story. Hello, I'm Sam, and with me is Ethan, one of the scientists behind the invisibility cloak. Hi, Ethan, and thanks for joining us today. What made you invent an invisibility cloak? Well, we decided on making an invisibility cloak because we wanted to make things invisible, like, uh, let's say, cameras, chairs, and other stuff. Can you show me how the invisibility cloak works? What do you hope the cloak will be used for? Like hiding things and hiding people and to like so they can do things when they're under like so they're like undercover and stuff. Do you think the invisibility cloak will become a trend for people to wear? Yeah. Well, that makes things very clear. Thanks for joining us. Back to you, Emily, in the studio. Thanks, Sam. And now, 
How's this for an interesting yarn? A new wave of graffiti crime is covering the country. Thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters, these wool-waving criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with small jerseys and scarves under the cover of darkness. Police say the knitted activities of the gang are illegal because their woolly crimes are being done on public property without permission. The popularity of wool and graffiti is growing. The police warn that if the midnight knitters aren't caught soon, every tree, lamppost and traffic light in the country will soon be warmly dressed against the cold. The problem is spinning out of control, a police spokesman said today. There are a close-knit group of dyed-in-the-wool criminals. We are stitching together a case, but it's not seem seamless. There is no real pattern to this crime. So far, the criminal knitters have escaped arrest and continue to pull the, pull the wool over the eyes of the, both public and the police. We go now to a secret location with our investigator reporter, Leo, who has an exclusive interview with one of the Midnight Nighters gang. Thanks, Grace. I'm John Smith, and joining me in this top secret location is two members of the Midnight Knitters gang. Hello, Ginger and McJagger, and thanks for joining us. What do you do into the dark underworld of, of n knitted graffiti? Um, well, I found this show on um, Channel 3. And it was about um, the war back in um, 1941, and uh, and um, me and um, Mick Jagger here were watching it, and um, we're just past over Mick Jagger now. Yeah, we're watching a show about um, knitting, and it's interesting. It's a documentary. Somebody knitted a cow. That's what I'm gonna do. What's that? Do you do you see yourself as a cri cri as criminals? Why or why not? Criminals? No. Nah. Um, we're just um, trying to like bring out the peace in the world, bring out the brightness and the, the just the environment, you know. Environment, peace. Yeah, like have peace. Just that stuff. Enjoy. Apart from trees, lampposts, and traffic lights, what else would you like to? To knit um, like, uh, um, with your wilderness? Oh, I'd like to um, make a cow, maybe, or a cat, maybe, a, maybe a, a human, maybe. Just, you know, make it real cool, real cool. Maybe a dinosaur, Ferrari, maybe a boat, that'd be good. And cruise. How do you guys keep your secret identities, like, without being seen, caught? Got glasses. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the hair. It's just, it's just so ginger. You don't actually look ginger? Oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm ginger, right? Ginger. Thanks for your time, Ginger and Ginger and Big Jagger of the Midnight Knitters gang. N now over to you, Lockie, Lockie and Joe, Luca and Joe, with the weather update. Thanks Leo, I'll make sure to hit the streets at night if I find myself feeling a bit chilly. Speaking of which, let's look at the weather ahead for the nation with Joe and Luca. How's it lo looking, Joe? Starting in the far north in Kaitai, look out for some pretty flash flooding and raindrops as big as your head. If you're going outside, wear a hat. In Auckland, there will be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions, but those are the conditions and you'll just have to accept them. There will be no weather at all for the Bay of Plenty. It's taking a short holiday, but is expected to be back for the weekend. Napier and Hastings, the weather will sometimes be changeable and sometimes not. We have really no idea what will happen there. 
In Taranaki, a mild depression brings with it a very dull day, with no highlights at all. It will be overcast and gloomy all morning, but things should cheer up by the evening, so don't worry. Everything will be f- fine. Wellington will have another capital day. There will be no wind at all. The conditions will be so pleasant they'll actually be extreme. In the top of the South Island, Kaikoura can always expect sunny, calm and beautiful conditions. Except for tomorrow when the weather will be the worst you've ever seen. A A real mix for Christchurch which will have some unreasonable rainfall, some sensible wind, moderate thunderstorms and some very angry snow. And in, th- and in the lower south, Dunedin will be frosty, cold and unfriendly until late morning, when, when the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. Well, that's all from us, but I'll see you back, you all, tomorrow. Back to you, Grace and Emily. tomorrow's World Cup semis. Now with a couple of minutes left in the show, it can only mean one thing. It's two minutes with Amy. Amy, and welcome to my show. Hello, Marley and Selena. Thank you for joining us. Now, Selena is told that between you and Justin Bieber? Well, actually, I had a first few wondering. You did not. Oh, what a bitch. I do want to be. Well, there's only one way of finding out which one of you has a ring on your finger. See, mine is pure gold. So is mine. Oh, really? Are you sure? Well, the thing is, which one of them is really from Justin Bieber? Let's find out. That says Justin Bokestrath. He's the Julie you ran to. Now, is she the future wife of Justin Bieber? No, she has ran off to Justin Bokestrath's as well. Well, that's... Well, thank you, Selena and Miley. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, that's been two minutes with me. Yeah, what she said. Um, just one thing, I've got a call. Hello, Justin Bieber. Are you dating Miley Cyrus or Selena Gomez? None, neither of them. That's extremely interesting. Well, back to the... Well, back to the studio with Emily, um, with Emily and Grace. Thanks, Amy. Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed today's broadcast. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Grace. Oh, I'm Grace. And we're here for the Smash News. Bye-bye. I'm Grace.